Hi guys, welcome to my coffee show. My name is Jack and today we are comparing different 83 mm burrs. We're going to play with not one, not two, but three or maybe even four different bursts. I was planning to use my niche duo for this video, but it's very, very difficult to actually replace the burrs on the burr carriers. So I will be using DF83V. Big thank you to Joe from Espresso Outlet for sending me this unit. Great grinder to have, one of my favorite grinders for sure. Works perfectly perfectly, has strong engine, regulated RPMs and also changing of the burrs is relatively easy, calibration of this grinder is very easy as well which helps a lot. Comes with standard Chinese made burrs and those are DLC burrs, you can get both burrs for espresso and a pour over if you pay a little bit extra. Just a quick word here, DLC is not a geometry of the burrs, it's just a coating, diamond like carbon coating, that's what gives those burrs that kind of a dark blackish blackish gun metal color and those burrs are very good as such but obviously we all want better and better so today I will compare standard DLC burrs with SSP multi-purpose burrs and with SSP cast lap sweet burrs we're going to do espresso but then I will swap standard DLC burrs for those pour over DLC burrs and we're going to do a pour over test as well so exciting video if you are as excited as myself definitely click like sit tight and enjoy if you look at all those burrs, each of them looks different, each of them has slightly different geometry, obviously a different coating as well. I'm not sure how much the coating is important for overall flavors of the coffee, but definitely the geometry can affect a lot. DLC espresso burrs, they remind me slightly of the high uniformity burrs from SSP that I had some time ago. But if you look at the pour over burrs, well, they look like no others. Now, MP burrs, the cutting surface again, different than the rest of those burrs nice shiny probably the best looking burrs here and the ugliest burrs uh, lap sweet cast burrs I didn't want to clean them too much because I don't want to remove that patina or whatever the oils of the coffee both MP and the cast burrs I seasoned them with about 7 kg of coffee each those cast burrs they require much much more seasoning than you would think probably even 10 kg would do them good MP I would say 5 kg is the minimum I also seasoned the DLC burrs not sure exactly how much coffee I put through but I would say at least 5 kg through each I'm not 100% sure how the seasoning works but I've done many tests and I've noticed it works just a quick reminder I said it long time ago I won't be doing burrs alignment anymore I don't have patience for that you know we can talk we can speculate we can talk about heat distribution we can talk about geometry of the burrs and so on and so on but let's run those tests if you don't have much time by the way you can skip to the last part of the video where I I share with you my final thoughts. Let's start with espresso. I will record this video over a few days so you may notice different lighting, you may notice some differences behind me. I want to taste espresso on one day, I want to taste the pour over on another day. For espresso we're going to use this coffee from Cold Town Coffee Roasters. They sell this coffee for pour over. I don't like it for pour over but it is okay for espresso. They promise blackberry, jasmine, peach but to be honest the flavor notes never agree with mine. La Marzocco Liva style profile on decent rpm 800 and the shot from standard burrs is ready it only took me three attempts cheers Thick body, very pleasant texture of the shot. You get a deeper notes like a darker chocolate, some sweetness. In terms of fruitiness, not so much. Maybe some peaches in the background, but I'm, maybe I'm imagining it. If you like those thicker shots of espresso, if you don't mind to trade clarity for that body for a bit more texture, this is a shot for you. Those are the burrs for you. Okay, now we will be swapping to the cast lap sweet cast burrs. This one took me five attempts, so I end up on the setting number. 26 never really happened before that I had to go to number 26 by the way if you hear some noise in the background it looks like my neighbors are having sexy time but I'm sure we're having more fun here uh, anyway cheers fruitiness is enhanced in the first shot I said it was like a bitter chocolate sweetness and depth here there is also depth but there is that pleasant fruity sourness maybe not becoming dominant but one of the main players here there is also some degree of clarity suddenly I'm getting fruitiness here less bitterness maybe a tad less body than the first shot but still a pleasant body okay and now we're moving to those uh, MP bears those famous 
MP bears. As you can see with each shot I'm becoming more and more over caffeinated. Who knows what will I do by the end of this video. Oh, and eventually we have a shot. This one it took me probably like seven attempts. Yeah definitely the trickiest. Cheers. The sharpest notes here. Body thin. I said the first two shots were pleasant. This one is a bit more challenging. There is that separation of notes. Sourness, bitterness here. And there is the fruitiness, less of the sweetness. In terms of fruitiness, probably those caspers gave me a little bit more. But cast, they were kind of mixed together playing together. Here, boom, 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 boom. You get sourness, sharpness, bitterness, this, this, this. The coffee, it does not linger on your tongue. So you get that those that sensation almost like if someone was putting needles or chopping your tongue. I mean, in a pleasant way. <laughs> you have to concentrate to catch those notes, but each of them is very, very clear. There is a character here, but it can be challenging. It's not for everybody. Now, guys, if you allow me, I have to rest my taste buds and then we're going to do pour over test. We will use my Oria V4 for the pour over. I will use those cheap Kalita filters. I don't want to waste expensive filters because probably I would have to dial in the coffee again and again and again. We're going to use the coffee from Tehran Coffee Roasters. I think they're from London. This is an interesting coffee here because they add some bacteria to the fermentation process and we should get flavor notes of banana, mango and papaya here. We will start with MP bears because I already have them in. Then we will swap to cast and then I will put with those pour over DLC bars. Okay, and I have cup from MP bars ready. I'm getting better and better at swapping those bars. So by the time this cooled down to the nice temperature, I already managed to swap the bars for the uh, cast bars. Crisp flavor notes. I would say pineapple. There is a sourness. Very fresh cup. I can detect bananas, but only because I know they should be there. I wouldn't call them immediately bananas, but tropical, tropical fruits, definitely. Nice, fresh, vibrant cup of coffee. That's what I'm expecting from my pour overs. Very, very good. And we have a cup from a cast burst, lap sweet burst. Cheers less clarity so i struggle now to find for example that banana that i was able to find in the first cup the sourness is a more dominant flavor but the sourness without the edge it lingers a little bit it feels like there's more oomph more body to the cup it lost a little bit of the clarity and crispiness but overall composition of this cup is very nice it's very pleasant it's very satisfying kind of comforting cup of coffee and the last cup is ready dlc brew burst. Cheers. Much milder. All the flavors milder, quieter. Not bad per se, but when you compare to those SSP bars, you can notice significant difference. Also pleasant. Uh, also, I can get some sourness. It's just not as much as those first two cups. Body kind of in between cast bars and MP bars. It's not bad. If I didn't try those two first, I would say this is a very decent cup of pour over. Okay, guys, if you reach to this part of the video, it is compulsory now to click like and consider even subscribing to the channel it took me forever it took me the whole weekend lots of burst swappings i have blisters on my hands there's always one screw that gets stuck and you have to swear and anyway i'm happy that i've done it even though i was expecting the differences tasting them side by side it was such a huge well eye opener taste buds opener whatever you call it there are huge differences between those bursts i leave proper explanation why there are those differences to some smart people the way i see it that the different bursts they cut the coffee slice slightly differently and the shape of the coffee particles is different and therefore when the water goes through the coffee it dissolves those flavors slightly differently and it can accentuate the certain trends in the coffee but if you add to that the thermal distribution and few other things then you can get lost here so what can you expect when you swap the burst from the standard burst to ssp burst the few things that you will notice immediately different noise when you grind also the touching point the zero point will be different the difference in the time of the grinding was huge. What I've noticed, DLC bars were the easiest to dial in, followed by cast bars, uh, followed by MP bars. So I struggled a lot with those MP bars. That zone for espresso with the MP bars was very, very narrow. There's something that you need to be aware when you swap to those bars. It won't be easy. Another thing that you need to be aware is that you might not enjoy the results. So if you like those standard DLC bars, I would recommend to upgrade to cast bars rather than MP bars. It might sound controversial they accentuate flavor notes they give you the clarity and everything else 
but they still keep the pleasantness. Those empty bars, the clarity up to the roof, but those all those sharp edges here and there, I didn't enjoy that shot of espresso that much. I appreciated those details, I appreciated those cl this clarity. If that's what you're looking for, go for the empty bars, but out of those three, the most pleasant were the cast bars. Now for the pour over, the winner here, MP bars. I think those are my favorite SSP bars for the pour over. They give me that crispiness, that vibrancy, everything that I'm looking for in my pour over. Cast bars, again, very pleasant, also very nice for the pour over, but not as open as those MP bars. So they lost some of the nuances. And with this coffee that relies on those nuances, that lost slightly on a character. DLC bars by themselves, very nice, but so, so much quieter when you compare with those more expensive burst we haven't talked about the price those dlc burst uh, i think you pay extra 70 dollars for for them those ssp burst much much more expensive 350 dollars or so i managed to buy all of them second hand a bit cheaper my recommendation here would be to start with those standard bursts see how you like them i'm sure you will enjoy them it's a very good grinder those are very very good bursts for the price but if and when you plan to upgrade ssp can bring you much much more and there is one more ssp SP burst high uniformity. Unfortunately, I sold them long time ago, so I cannot compare. Every few months, I decide that I'm going to quit YouTube and then I start selling things and then I change my mind and again and again and again. I wasn't that much impressed with them. Yes, they were improvement over the standard burst, but the improvement, in my humble opinion, does not justify the price tag. In the comments, well, any observations are welcome, but if you could share what are your favorite bursts, it does not have to be 83 millimeter bursts, but what are your favorite bursts and why. Plenty more things coming but for today thank you very much for watching my name is Jack this is my coffee show and hopefully I will see you soon thank you bye <music>